This tutorial has been cut into three parts. Part 1 is about the basic knowledge in Photoshop elements. Part 2 and 3 are about the practice itself. Hello and welcome to my tutorial. I'm Martin W. Lausch. In a black and white photo, you need to have a certain balance concerning exposure. This vintage photo is too bright. So let's improve it by using the Levels command. I go to Enhance, Adjust Lighting, and Levels. I move the black slider to the right. And I stop at 53. I now take the white slider, move it to the left, up to 235. And I hit OK. Sometimes old black and white photos have some unexpected colors. Using the zoom tool, I can see some yellowish spots around here. I now click on the hand tool. To see it all. To get rid of any color, I take an enhance, adjust colors, and remove color. This operation is also called desaturation. The spot healing tool can be found here. Make sure you have the content aware checked. You can adjust the brush size here. Make sure your brush is smooth. Here's how this tool works. First, you locate a crack. Let's say this red area. Then the Photoshop elements will look what's surrounding it. And will clone or copy the pixels towards the center. And the Photoshop elements will try to keep a good balance between shades of gray around the area. So I kind of draw over the crack, like this, by dragging my mouse around. And I release the pressure to see the result. Here and there I do the same for this small spot. Now the long crack. I draw over the crack, keeping my click down. And I release the pressure to see the result. I continue to clean up here and there. The brush should be set at the right size. Not too large, not too small. You decide. On the left side, uh, let's try this large crack. You can see that the result is not as expected. If you're not satisfied with the result, you can undo your action in the history palette by clicking upwards. Or you can redo your action by clicking downward, like this. By default, Photoshop Elements will keep 50 action or history states in its memory. You can change that. Go to Edit, Preferences, and choose Performance. Here I can type 100, for example. 
you can go up to 1000 and I hit OK. That's a safe number. The clone stamp tool. This tool can be found here. Here's the principle. You first push the Alt key or Option key for Mac users to determine what's your source. First you will see a crosshair. It can be anywhere. Ok, here's an example. I take the eye as the source. By pressing Alt or Option for Mac users, release the pressure. Then I move my mouse to the right at the center of this circle. That circle will be the destination. I click and release the pressure on my mouse. Remember, do not click between the source and the destination. Here we have a brush without any softness. With this slider you can adjust the size and pixels. I take 63. The eyeball will be the center point. So I push the Alt or Option key for Mac users. Release the pressure. I go down a bit and click to clone the eyeball. Let's undo that by clicking here. Now, to avoid any demarcation in my cloning, I'll take a smooth brush with the same dimension. I stop at 63 pixels. I can also draw a portion of her face. The tip of her nose being the source. Move my mouse to the left, click and hold it. Drag it around to draw her face, like this. Notice the plus symbol moving around her lips. That's the moving source. Now let's undo these two actions. Now clean up time. I change my brush to 77 pixels. A bit larger. I'm cloning from right to left as you can see. Once again the plus symbol being my source. Of course they're useful, they're even powerful. Now I'm going to make a selection and use a filter. This green area will be filtered. Now I'm making the selection. I go back to the starting point, close my selection. I take filter, noise, dust and scratches. Instantly I get a nice result. But let's see if I can get something better. That's OK like this. I hit OK. I remove the selection with Select Deselect. Now the Zoom tool. I click, hold my click down and drag it and release my click. Here you can see no grain. It's kind of flat compared to a forehead which has a grainy surface. Now I take the polygonal lasso to make a selection. Ok, I change the feather from 10 pixels to 17. And I hit enter on my keyboard. I surround the area in question. 
and I double click to close the selection. I take filter, noise, and add noise. You can see some colors. That's normal. Now I need to test the amount or strength of this filter. 2% is not enough. I can also move to the right or left. At the bottom of this window, the monochromatic option isn't always a good option. Finally, 10% will be okay. Let's remove the generated colors. If they can enhance, adjust color and remove color. And I deselect. I click on the hand tool to see it all. In Photoshop Elements, you can also use another filter called Green, which will be very useful in certain cases. You may have noticed a certain demarcation or cut around this green area. You can fix that with the Spot Healing tool. I make sure I have a smooth brush. I drag the mouse like this to obtain a good result and release the pressure. The same thing with the screen area. I draw here and there and wait for the result. Part 2 and 3 will do the whole improvement, starting from scratch. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in my next tutorial. Bye. <laughs>